US troops from Syria and Afghanistan. So what will this mean for the administration's foreign policy and our national security? We have David Sears with us now as a retired Navy SEAL to comment on that. First, your reaction or your thoughts on, on James Mattis leaving? Well, he, he's greatly respected throughout the community, the entire Defense Department, the interagency. He's an extremely intelligent man. With that said, I think he did the exact right thing. He figured out that his worldview and where he's trying to go no longer match up with the president's or it came to a point where they didn't and he chose to leave which is the right choice right he he said as much in his his resignation letter and now doesn't that make replacing him difficult and some of the names that are thrown around with general keen or others would agree with secretary mattis on many of these issues especially syria right they would so this is why we have you know it's not the president's national security staff it's going to be Department of Defense confirmed cabinet member by the Senate. Mm -hmm. So you may not have somebody who lines up exactly with President Trump, but they definitely know what they're coming into. How does it affect, or how do you think it affects morale, and how much does that matter from your own experience of being in the, in the military? I don't, I don't know how long you served, but I assume that it was long enough that you served under you know, administrations that on a personal level you may have agreed with, some you may have disagreed with, certainly individual decisions that you may have agreed or disagreed with personally, but as you point out, the polling backs this up, polling of the military, he was, he was very popular, Secretary Mattis. He was, and I served over 20 plus years, so under mm -hmm. multiple presidents yeah. and lots of different leadership, it's resilient. The system's very resilient. Will people be somewhat demoralized? Absolutely. When you lose someone of that stature that has that reputation of, you know, warrior, poet, who's been on the battlefield but is also a great intellectual and friend of the enlisted and the officers, it is demoralizing, but that doesn't last. Guys know they have to move on and do their jobs. This happens. Yeah, this strategy, um, the pulling out of Syria in particular, I know Afghanistan, we're going to withdraw some troops from there as well. This strategy of pulling back is something the president's talked about a lot over his lifetime and certainly over his campaign. So that part of it I don't think was surprising to people. Maybe the abrupt nature of how it was announced and whether Secretary Mattis was uh, consulted on it this week was surprising. Um, what's your personal view on that? Because there'd be a lot of people coming out and saying, now we're less safe because of this, that type of thing. Are people going too far in their, in their kind of analysis of it? They are. I think that you look at this through a very singular military lens. We have a lot of other elements of national power. So if we've decided the military has kind of run its course in terms of what it can do, you start looking at it. It's not that we're abandoning Syria or our efforts there, but there's other elements of national power that can be brought to bear as well. Economic, right. diplomatic, all those pieces. So making these causal connections of this is going to lead to the next 9-11 or just ridiculous. Right, that's I the mean, Lindsey Graham you can't comment. Do that. But, you know, there are people that said, you know, I've, especially people who have a record of saying, hey, I was tough on President Obama for getting out of Iraq. i got to be the same on, on President Trump because that didn't work out so well, and this won't either. Do you, is that a fair statement or thought? No, it's, they're, different, they're different places. They're different times. You're at different stages of the fight. They're different governments. One, we were involved in the Iraq government heavily mm -hmm. and helping them reestablish and restore this country. Syria, we're there as, you know, questionable legally, uninvited mm -hmm. guests in a section of their country that's all oil heavy. So right. what our initial mission was to take Raqqa and get rid of ISIS in Raqqa. We did that. Then it morphed to countering Iran. Then it morphed to protecting the Kurds who helped us. Now it's morphing to we're not... So where are we going with this? What are 2,000 troops doing? I don't think you can make any causal right. lines linear to this is going to